We landed in Canada on the evening of Canada Day. It was like an enormous welcome party. My dad started his job as a university professor. My mom was soon teaching flamenco in her own dance studio and putting on shows. My sister, Tanya, started high school and I entered fifth grade. My father said it all seemed too good to be true. The life we had left behind was also a good one, but we were excited to start a new life in Canada. My parents said this country was known for protecting human rights and for welcoming immigrants like us. During the first year, we got used to our life in Toronto, making new friends and getting settled in. My parents even began looking to buy a home. They also began applying for permanent residency, but I'll let my father and mother talk about that. I had forgotten that the university's immigration and relocation coordinator had cautioned me on the phone while we were still back home that I might face stumbling blocks in applying for permanent residency. But after going through all the paperwork for the entire family and finally receiving confirmation that our application was complete for evaluation, our nine-year-old son was singled out for further documentation in order to determine our family's admissibility for permanent residency in Canada. All this because Nico has Down syndrome. Even though he has no history of medical complications, our son was repeatedly required to undergo additional medical examinations based solely on his genetic identity as a person with trisomy 21. The application process that should have taken no more than 13 months dragged on for over three years. During this time, we looked into the laws of this country and discovered the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. In Section 15 on Equal Rights, it states that every individual is equal before the law without discrimination based on race, national or ethnic origin, color, religion, sex, age, or mental or physical disability. This law represented the Canada that we had expected to live in. But the Immigration and Refugee Protection Act, passed by Parliament in 2002, shows a very different face. It identifies six categories of people who may be deemed inadmissible to Canada. The first, for security reasons, includes spies against Canadian interests and subversive agents against democracies. The second, for human and international rights violations, includes people who have engaged in terrorism, genocide, war crimes, or crimes against humanity. The third and fourth, for criminality and serious criminality, include those convicted outside or inside of Canada of an indictable offense punishable by at least 10 years in prison. The fifth, for organized criminality, includes people involved in international criminal activities such as human trafficking, money laundering, or profiting from crime. And the sixth, for health reasons, includes people likely to be a danger to public health or safety, as well as people who might reasonably be expected to cause excessive demand on Canada's health or social services. So, at the end of a long lineup of people engaged in espionage, subversion, terrorism, human rights abuse, crimes against humanity, war crimes, genocide, human trafficking and money laundering, stands our little boy Nico for having Down syndrome. But trisomy 21 is not an illness, much less an infectious disease dangerous to public health, nor are people with Down syndrome a danger to public safety. Yet they are singled out by Immigration Canada for inadmissibility supposedly on health grounds. I can understand that a country wants to do all it can to keep its people safe and secure. But I ask myself, shouldn't a country like Canada be able to distinguish between the noble act of caring for its people against dangerous criminal activity and infectious diseases and the shameful act of discriminating against people with disabilities for what they might cause the state? It would seem that the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms can tell the difference. But where has the Charter been when people with mental or physical disabilities have been systematically singled out as inadmissible to this country? I guess I'm not the first to be considered inadmissible to Canada for having Down syndrome, but hopefully I will be the last.